Call it 701. I'll be in the meeting. Uh, let's go to business and be a roll call. Mr. Tamara? Here. Mr. Horton? Present. Mr. Kelleher? Here. Mr. Bernardi? Here. Mr. Bradford is excused. Mr. Perkins Cutler? Here. And Mrs. Wise? Here. All right. Uh, we have uh, Julie Monkow also has an all right now, but uh, we have to Yep. Okay. So uh, we do seat an alternate. Um, I'll make motion to receive from Shell Wise. I will second that. Discussion? Um, All those in favor? Um, opposed? Anyone abstain? All right, Michelle, you are seated as a fully member this evening. Motion is still holding up for you tonight. Yeah. All right, the uh, Next order of business will be to approve the minutes from the April 6, 2021 public hearing. So, All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? And we have a second from Mr. Kelleher. Any discussion? Anyone? Seven. And all right, you're done. We'll uh, vote on that. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? All right, the motion carries. The next uh, order of business is to uh, approve the meet meeting minutes from April 13, 2021. We have a motion for that. Good night. Okay. All second. Can you please say your name when you make a motion and second a motion? Uh, yeah, we have, we have Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Bernard made a motion and Mr. Fortin seconded. Discussion on that was. All right, there are none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Anyone abstain? Right. Motion carries. Next order of business is the uh, minutes of the May 11th, 2021 special meeting. We have a motion. Step close. Right. moves. We have a second. One of seconds. Any discussion? Here we go. All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Okay. Anyone abstain? I know. Can uh, you abstain? If you want to abstain. Uh, Mr. Bernard, you abstain. Uh, motion carries. All right. The next order of business would be public comment. Uh, I believe we're all set for that. Now, principal, for people to uh, call in. Can call in or yeah, call they in or can text. also zoom. Okay, so if you're uh, if you're attending uh, via Zoom, uh, please go to the uh, chat area to signify if you have a question under uh, public comments, which will come later in the meeting. If in fact you are uh, doing so by phone, uh, as star nine, that will uh, let us know that you have a question. We will look at those again, as I said, under item number eight, public comment. Okay, next order of business is uh, old business. Update on the state. Aaron? Good evening, this is Karen Fitzpatrick. I um, like to start with the American Rescue Plan to fill in the retirement on the state. So, have they taken two separate webinars on this? We don't have a definitive answer as far as the state needs to find. But what I did find out was originally we were um, in the table to 
the um, U.S. Treasury has given the state county money, and even though we don't have counties in the state, the actual municipalities, but the, the town, in fact, we're getting 2.3 million, not 799,000. So I have already went in and I applied for a 50% payment um, this year, and we'll get a 50% payment next year. We have um, until 2024 to sort of commit those funds, but we have to 2026 to actually expand them. So therefore, this cannot be part of our general fund. This will be a special revenue fund that I will be creating. Um, and I think after speaking with our first selectman in Frisco, our HR class office manager, what we would like to do is probably come up with some kind of a committee because this is an awful lot of money and we already have people calling up for this money. But I think we have had no guidance as to how to administer the funds. So we're, we're, we're talking about probably committee. Um, and then having an application process. But I can tell you that our, our first would be to reach out to the DC and services um, department of health. Those seem to be the places that people go to when they're in need and they really haven't had anybody to reach out to. So the local businesses are starting to call us asking us for reimbursement. Um, this is going to be a very long process because there's 152 pages. And this is just the state is just a taxpayer. They're just getting the funding, using a formula, and giving us the funding. Anything else to be directed to the U.S. Treasury. So it's a learning process. Um, it's a very time-consuming process. And again, we really have to have a major thought as to what we're going to do with some of this funding. We do have the right to transfer some of this funding to separate organizations. Um, so it, it's really going to take some time to sit down and discuss how we get the message out who we're going to be able to distribute the funding to. Um, I personally have to sign a civil rights form stating that I want to still buy from the money. Um, and, and I really think that this is something that, you know, perhaps whether it be myself, and the first selectman, the chairman of the board of finance, the president, Barry Shedd, uh, Frisco, and I think we talked about possibly our recreation director because a lot of these funding is tending towards that. Um, and we're also going to reach out to Steve Connor, who's our agent for the elderly, um, just to kind of get an idea with different things. We might even reach out to um, the people that are in our class to kind of Karen, yeah, um, you said that originally we got the original we got to 799. Yes, that was before I didn't use any funding. Okay, so what is it? What is the number again? Well, it's, it's approximately 2.3 million. I didn't bring the form with me to tell you the exact amount. But it's on the board. I thought at first the 2.3 was us the money, and I found out that that is not correct. They're doing their own funding through ESSDR and from other municipal CRS, and it's for the municipalities. So yeah. It's a substantial amount more than what we originally had. Yeah. And you mentioned folks from the world, sorry, but I can't let it pass you too far. We have until 2024 to actually commit the funds to be part of that, but we can have up until 2026 to write the checks, basically, if it's what comes down to it. So we will not be part of our general fund. This will be a special revenue fund that I will need to create in the future. Thank you. Well, well, we had been, um, we had talked to one person who um, has really done a lot of research and is very involved through CCM. And yes, it is taking by ACH system some of the time and some of the raising system. That is allowed, but we still have to get folks to, because there's still a lot more research we need to do in the um, I really haven't had any 
could stick out it done as quickly as I can. But um, I, it's going to be a learning process, I think, for all of us. This is all new. Um, we will be involved. Following the reporting requirements to the U.S. Treasury, we don't have to report to the state, but we will have to report to the Treasury. And if I'm not mistaken, we have to keep records for at least seven years, as if we were to write the tax returns. And yeah. if they have not set up with OPM any um, guidance for reporting that, and everything that the state knows, they will put on their OPM website under the American Education, so anybody can go on and review and. But again, I you know I'm only speaking for myself and for the child of my own children and going to be a very long but to make sure we fully understand how to distribute the tax. Right. If not, then the next order of business would be uh, update on local bridge project. Okay, I have a um, statement that came in today from Pete Corner from CHA, which is our engineering company. Um, basically, we uh, Dave has um, contacted the manufacturer for the movie that is from the state of Connecticut, and he is part of the local bridge program. So we had to get some information to provide to them because they have funding for the bus project. We originally have more money in the board for um, than we originally went and applied for this project. We thought it was going to be um, peak work in Hopkins Road that was going to be in the local bridge. Now they are saving their funding, so we had to come up with a um, completion deadline. So basically, the bus road um, is looking like it's about 85% complete. And it looks like construction will start in maybe May of 2022 and hopefully completed by September of 22. Um, Peak Brook Road, that's going to be the first project. And right now, some of that bridge abuts somebody else's property. So we're kind of trying to get an easement um, to be able to get on and access that. Um, we're going to be having that surveyed to see exactly how much of the property is up Peak Brook Bridge area. Um, so I, I really don't think it's probably going to be at least another month before we even start looking into financing. Again, speaking of our financial advisor, um, you know, interest rates are at that at their lowest. They were probably starting to you know, make more payments to the national bond and lock it in, and then we can have the pay and no, no future penalty. Um, just keep in mind anytime we pay out a bond, the anticipation note it can be rolled over three times just in legal fees, um, financial fees, and interest. So, as we know, this is going to be a multi year project. But as soon as I'm able to get a little bit more information when they're ready to go out to pay on the I'll start letting you know what the um, options are for finance. Any more questions? You want to remain with money? Update on the state budget. I've been, uh, excuse me, update on uh, town hall uh, emergency expenditures. So, the town hall emergency expenditures are the ACAC system right here in the winter. That has been completed. It was approximately $10,000. We did use our uh, regular repair and maintenance line item. We just ended up overextending the line item because there wasn't enough for that project, but we still stayed within our annual budget. So I think it was kind of safe to say that that particular job is complete and there was no need for us to come back and ask for additional funding. Thank you, Dunnett. Hearing none, we'll move on. Update on uh, executive orders. Um, update on the executive orders. I think everybody is happy. Um, I, I will say one thing that Crystal, uh, sometime at the end of this week, beginning of next week, will be sending out information to board and community here. Okay. Um, one particular bill is um, HB 6448. And it's basically stating that it is no longer mandated to have 
Zoom meetings or virtual meetings. It's basically stating that we can continue based on each board and committee and membership decision on how they want to conduct their business. So we can have in person, we can still have hybrid, and we can have Zoom. But that is up to each individual board or commission to decide how they want to do that. The only thing you have to do is let they might be a couple of things this year. Please let your board members know 48 hours prior how to conduct the meeting. But if one of your board members does not want to come in person, then you have to definitely offer them that option to, to do it. But again, these are discretionary based on the board and commission. There's plenty of information, so if there's questions, you will read through it. Um, feel free to email me and I'll, and I'll try to get you answers. Uh, as, of, as of right now, I, uh, I did canvas the board members and I got a reply from them uh, so far. And everybody was in favor of holding in person meetings. And uh, that's the way I have to make see it. Um, I don't see any reason why uh, we need to have the Zoom meetings. If in fact uh, people want to find out what's going on, you can always uh, refer to the uh, taped uh, meeting or uh, read the minutes. And if you have any questions, they can contact uh, the town hall or uh, the board finance director and we will get their uh, concerns answered for them. Anyone else have anything else? Yep. Okay. On to the next item, which is uh, item seven, new business. Uh, on May is uh, use of <clears throat> contingency funds for town legal fees. Um, well, I apologize for not sending a memo. Um, I had this conversation with Mike in my office following the Zoom reaction. And ourselves. The reason we're asking for use of the contingency funds is because we have technically over funded our legal funds. This year, um, there were many issues due to COVID related to a lot of personnel issues. Um, you know, we, we had some we, we have had some personnel issues that I can't really discuss at this point, but these are how have the legal fees that we're asking to be able to um, use from the contingency fund. We still have May and June, and I'm just going to actually run into July in the next budget. We hope to be working with plenty of money. But right now, we're about $5,000 over budget. And like I said, we still have um, May and June legal fees, and we have several different personnel issues going on right now um, and some pending issues with. Uh, we have one particular person in this town or group in this town who has um, some pending legal issues based on their assessment. Um, and, and all of that money has to come from someplace because we have to pay for these legal fees to address this issue. I cannot ask you for a specific amount because I do not know. I can tell you that it's probably going to cost at least 10000 between now and the end of June. That's just my estimate. It just depends on how quickly we can get through some of the legal issues. Is the current amount a little less than a little less than seventy thousand? I think we used about three hundred for the last month, and that's about it. So there's over sixty nine thousand. And I know that we will not go over budget if we if it was up for us to just continue spending that to show the true legal fees to be more transparent. We can do that with your permission, just keep overspending that line item so then the board will see exactly what we spent this year. But that's an option as well. But we are out of money. I we can do a transfer in September from one department to that line item. There's, there's several things we can do, but I really can't explain some of the legal issues, but they're very costly. And we have no choice to have to pay for them. Personally, I feel to be transparent, you should allow us to just continue to overexpend the selectmen's um, town council allowance line item. 
so that way we can report to you what it actually costs us this fiscal year for legal fees. And then when we go to do our transfers at the end of the year, like in September, we can just transfer that from one budget that has a surplus to that budget, or at that time, transfer some contingency to just show it up. But I think if you really want to be transparent in how much we have to spend in legal fees this year, the best way would just be to allow us to overextend that line item. Thank you. Okay. Um, you heard uh, what Karen had to say. Uh, anybody have any uh, comments on that or uh, any idea on how you would like to go? I think thank you all for the spending. Well, it's been back in the past days. Uh, at the end of the year, we don't we don't need to continue to transfer now. We don't need to have this expense because we just made it to try to have a double for legal fees here and there. Um, you know, year from now, don't think we're able to do that. We do that, but year from now, we're going to figure out what we actually spend on legal fees. I think the uh, best way to do it is let it go as. You know, they what they really are, legal fees, and we will take one year to end of the year to see what you Well, we thank you for that. Yeah, go ahead. Would you first be the legal fees um, for passing the complete time? No, not before the end of the year, actually. No. Well, I, I mean, I, I didn't think so. I just wanted to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I guess what I'm saying is. It would it be possible to be a special meeting in the middle of the process? Um, I don't think so because, again, like I say, this is only to June. Anything in July is not going to be possible. We only got 22 more days to spend money. <laughs> Michelle, you have any? Michael? David? Yeah. Um, sorry, we, we don't need a motion. Yes, but we just want to get we want to get the discussion out of the way first. So um, I agree, I agree, and I just you know I mean you know you know I agree with that. Uh, so it sounds like we're all in agreement. That's the way to go. So now we change the motion. That's what the motion is. I mean, You're gonna move to allow it. That's, uh, we're going to get dumped at the end of the fiscal year. Okay. And that was seconded by Mr. Bernardi, and we made motion, correct? Yes. We're on the All right. Any discussion on that? Okay. Section's been taken care of. So, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Okay, the motion carries unanimous. Thank you. Um, so, on to the uh, next item. Uh, the Board of Ed requests for a transfer from the Health Reserve. You should be able to uh, go ahead with that. Um, as you can see by the letter, we're requesting the remainder of the hundred and sixty two thousand for the health insurance reserve fund to um offset the insurance budget. And this is something that has been recommended by the um auditors and I'm sorry, this is yeah, yeah this is right. Um, so that's that. Anyway, I have any questions on that? Okay. Go ahead, David. So, the total amount in the health insurance, total insurance reserve fund, total amount balance 162. No. Okay, so currently we have a cash account 
a cash down of $325,577. Um, I think the board was planning on using this 162 to offset this current fiscal year and then in their fiscal year 22, they were asking for about 140 to close it at 164, 164. There's also a, um, the, the total fund balance though there is 380. Make 76 because there's also $56,000 that was in there from when the town had the health insurance policy. Uh, we thought we were going to be able to use that. We had put that in our budget as well as the collection budget this year, but we, um, I just wanted to have a kind of line here because we may have to make some So, what will happen is when the board is done spending this year and next year, the balance of that $56,000. And then, then we can close that fund if you want. Let me double ask you here. So, right, it's under the assumption that there was only about 150. Is that the 325 plus 50? Yes, yeah, so the 325 is pretty much the amount that we're going in. When they had the initial surplus, we opened the fund 51 tax account to put their money in there. So um, that money is, was for them to use, and they asked for 162000 in this current budget, but then when they presented their fiscal year 22, they asked to use more money, and that's just balance it out this year, next year, maybe. The balance of the 56000 is technically not from the Board of Ed, that was from the town account years ago that's been sitting there. We won't hopefully be using that, so hopefully you'll be able to jump into the bank of the line for the name of the town. I'd like to run on $62,000. Talked about their budget deliberation, that was going to be the amount after this year's debt. And the town's portion of the earmark. The town's portion has been sitting there for a while. It's an assumption that the town is using at the action. This current year, that has been
Next item C <coughs> request uh, from the board of ed for uh, additional funding. Very detailed. It's not like a presentation of funding, but it can be uh, you know, in my email at um, Federal Health Council. In the previous year budget, for the deliberations that we had, um, we had to make significant cuts to the budget. And then one of the budget meetings, it was asked uh, to take something from the maintenance uh, category of our budget and put it uh, and have those expenses if they are repairs and maintenance, which are allowable over the coming year under our recurring funds that could be used that you know, so could we cut that budget and then anticipation that if we do exceed um, the budget expectations that we do reach the money as well. So I'm like that's not my decision that's sort of some of the So the first balance, or they agree with the balance, and they're ready about money to um, cover the expenses this year. I have mentioned several times that the budget item will go to finance that we've been having significant issues with the receipt system. Not only one particular issue that's happening at any one time that's a major expenditure, but a little expenditure talk. We've had um, water pumps that have failed. We've had um, boiler heating controls that were, that failed. Some of them, because of the nature of them, I was able to submit to have them get reimbursed by our by our um, COVID reimbursement grants. Um, that totaled forty two thousand dollars worth of expenditures that I was able to get for the time. Um, but the other balance of the of those expenditures, which as I mentioned, sixty nine thousand um, dollars, were just things that are falling apart in our HVAC system. Not in any one building; they're in both buildings. Um, we also have a huge hole too. It has been rusting and and um, movable, so that the people when they come and fill the tanks have not been able to. Apparently, you hear a whistle when the oil fills up, and if they hear the whistle, then they know to stop filling the tank up. And that mechanism that has been broken in the box needed to be replaced. All kind of our um, major expenditure that we were budgeting for. So, we are requesting um, $69,000. Uh, um, 68,600 and uh, 79 cents. Yep. We were participating in that, that money um, based on our budget discussion normally in the budget process. The number two is after this major switch process. Uh, some of that, um, as you recall, we had the uh, Woods Cycle Academy assessment. That the capital um, project capital plan uh, requested the budget had the dollar amount and had two hundred eighteen thousand one hundred thirty six thousand in the capital plan and the uh, the finance approved two hundred twelve thousand four hundred eighty three it left the balance of five thousand six hundred fifty three. Um, Looks like it's having requested that it be reimbursed. We did make a request to the Woodstock Academy to during all of the discussion that happened at that board of finance meeting that you know they could make a request that they you know, give us a credit on that particular dollar amount based on the two year uh, proposal that they had submitted. And it's got a very nice connection. 
you know, also like that definitely is not a legendary item. So it was also like full for reimbursement of the one company. Another separate letter that you received was the uh, request for this year's uh, the 2022 capital plan. We had put through in the five year capital plan for this year. The <laughs> We have put through the budget amount um, uh, and then, well, no, the, the actual five year capital plan is in five five, which can also be called. Yeah. It was two hundred and nineteen thousand six hundred. Two hundred and nineteen thousand six hundred. That is what the was approved. In the five year capital plan. So, if I know in order to, to get this approved or can be taken from the funds from the town side, you have to initiate a uh, town meeting. Or So, that's going to be for a July expenditure. I'm not sure what the mechanism is to get that on the agenda or get the process um, going for the July. All right, so there is uh, there is funds that are right now in your uh, account to cover the of the uh, original two items, the 68, 6, and the $5,653, correct? Correct. The amount that we have in that fund is $166,641. One sixty one. All right, so uh, what is your latest? I think the best way to handle this would be for them to uh, give them approval to take that from their uh, non lapsing account. Get a motion for that. So moved. All right, so Mr. Gordon moves, and do we have a second? Seconds and further discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Moms? Abstain. Okay, that motion carries. All right, we have the answer. Now, let's come to the second item as far as the Woodstock. Capital assessment. Yeah. So we see uh, a bill which uh, gives us the specific cost for the two years, uh, the time to the floor project, and the uh, scope of the project. Uh, we have a then we can recommend to the uh, board of selectmen that we have the town meeting. And uh, if in fact uh, everything goes well at the town meeting, it would be moved to a referendum. And if approved at the referendum, the money would be available at the council meeting of the time. So until we get that information, uh, we can't do the thing. Well, what was in the original capital plan? Was 235 the number for this year or was it both? 219. So, can we even can we put on just can we put the 235 forward? No, no, we, we can only spend the three months to what was allotted in the capital. Yeah, well, it's fun. But it's important to note that we got originally got two year assessment in the data. I don't know if it's now changed. This is the third year, we don't have that information. But 
Well, about 26 percent of the students that go to the academy are uh, Woodstock students. So I, I would think that, yes, in fact, we do have some of them. If they were to lose half their school population for the night, and that's what we might be making. There are all high school around. Anything else? When do we get notifications that figure The figure usually comes when we start doing the uh, budget for next year for the following year. Usually October one we have a student count, and then I think it's usually January or February that we get what their next year's tuition is uh, or special education. Do they approach it from a capital expenditure or do they roll the whole thing in as the cost of educating their students? I was thinking differently. I think at the beginning, when it was first given as a special assessment, I think the towns were doing it differently. Um, now, year three, I'm not sure how, I have not been told. The expense was what we did with the capital expense for the first couple of years. I'm not sure what we did with it. Like most of the discussion on that. We move on to uh, public comments. Anyone have uh, public comments? Yeah, I see Megan there. I'm sorry, this is just very quick. I just want to let you know, I, I certainly appreciate you all holding the Zoom portion of the meeting. I think this is um, great for the public. Um, the audio has been exceptionally challenging for those of us on Zoom. Um, I, I understand how challenging it is to work on audio, particularly in that room, but I have probably made out about 25% of what everybody has said this evening. And that is despite the microphone. So I, I just want you all to be aware, um, you know, when you do minutes or, or future meetings, it's exceptionally challenging from this end to, to be able to follow. I can hear voices, but really not what you all are talking about. I think I have done the least in terms of the holiday and everything that we did. It's probably instructive, but it's September, so we have time to get that. Well, we're going to have to look at it. There will be no meeting as of now in uh, June or February. Go ahead and vote. Go ahead and stop. Okay, that's all I have. Oh, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Well, we have a second. All right. All right. We shall make a motion. Yep, a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you all very much. Apologize for the issues that we uh, had tonight. Uh, I know it's been a 
just a little bit. Thank you this through the whole thing, and uh, I appreciate everything that you've done, but uh, that I can't wait to get back to normal. All right, thank you all. Have a great night. Be safe.